Hello again. Well, today I have a super easy casserole. I had lost this recipe and it is so easy, I don't know why I couldn't remember it. I made this a long time ago when we were first married and I got the recipe. I could not remember where, but then my cousin Kathy sent me a copy of the cookbook from the church that my mom and all the family down by Oregon, Illinois attended, and that was the Ebenezer Reformed Church. And she sent it to me to look at, so I'm going to copy it. Look at this. I don't know if this was my cousin Kathy's cookbook or my Aunt Betty's cookbook, but these women, they cook plain food with very few ingredients, and it was good. So I'm going to copy most of this. I'll scan it and copy it. But today, I'm going to make hamburger and potato casserole. So for this I have a pound of burger, a small onion diced up, a quarter teaspoon of paprika, I, have to, I think I have a half in there, I'll see how much I'll use, and I have a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper in here, again I'm going to eyeball it. I have five potatoes here that I have sliced, and I put them in cold water, get rid of some of the starch, and a can of cream of mushroom soup. Okay, we're at Command Central. I'm going to brown the hamburger and put salt and pepper and onion in there also. I forgot to tell you that you're going to need milk also. And I have my casserole over here. I sprayed it and it's all set to go and the oven's on 350. Let's get this browning. So as you learn to cook, if you're a new cook, you, you learn how much you like and you don't like. So I'm going to put about half this in. It's a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper. Okay, in goes the onion. Remember, this is one small onion, and you can use as much as you like. That's to our liking right there, the whole small onion. But sometimes I don't add all of what they call for. So we're going to let this simmer and brown, and then we'll finish it off. You know, this cookbook, reading through it was a blast because I'm either related to everybody, or they're somehow shirt tail relatives or neighbors or something. It was like going to a family reunion. It was fun. The meat is browned. The onion was in there and the salt and pepper. Now I'm going to add the paprika and the soup. You know, this recipe comes from Mary Gurks. You'd be hard pressed to find a non-German name in that cookbook. <laughs> but I always thought her last name was Gerke. I must know somebody else with that last name. There. Now we're going to mix this together. Then we're at the point we can assemble, because remember, you already have your potatoes sliced. I put them in cold water to keep them from discoloring and also get some of that starch off of them. There was very little fat from that burger, so I'm keeping it in there. The recipe doesn't call for layering this, but I'm going to do that. Here's my potatoes. I've sprayed my casserole. Seems to me I used to layer it, so I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to put the meat in. I think I've already mentioned that we have a great niece, Ellie, who's getting married in October to Caleb. Well, the auction site we like in Beloit, Beloit Auction, had a big lot of Revereware on sale pans, and I love that stuff, so she now has Revereware for her new house. Okay, here goes the rest of the potatoes. You're going to need kind of a good size casserole here, you can see. Now I'm going to put milk in, so you, just enough so you can see the milk. You know, when these ladies did their cooking, they didn't always put the cup or the temperature in that you would use. Now this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for one and a half to two hours. You're supposed to put enough milk to be able to see it in the dish. That might be a little much. We'll see if I have to drain some off. But this is all set for the oven. So this is going to be a twofer. I'm going to show you a recipe I came across, oh, just last week, and it is really good. I've taken apples, peeled them, and cored them. And then you put some regular white sugar and cinnamon together, as much cinnamon as you like. Dip the apple slices, you've sliced it, 
into that and dehydrate them. And it is so tasty. It's like having an apple pie without the crust. See that? This is how these look. I think I had more cinnamon in this batch. They are crispy. They are delicious. You might want to give that a try. Although I don't know how healthy it is with all the sugar. But you do have cinnamon. Give that one a try. I think they need to dehydrate either in the oven at 200 for about three hours. Flip them halfway. Mine have been in my dehydrator. It doesn't go as high as 200. Oh, for several hours. It'll probably take a little more. I forgot to tell you that the price of groceries has not gone down in our area, so I doubt it's gone down in yours. So you can add to this, just use the one pound of meat, double the potatoes, add some beans, peas, whatever you like to it, and you could easily double this and feed a lot more people. Also, I put that in the oven without a lid. This has been in an hour and a half, and I'm calling it done because the, the potatoes are... Oops. And I'm calling it done because the potatoes are tender. And at this point, if you want, you can add more seasonings. I'm going to add a little bit more pepper. As you can see, it cooked up very nice. There's just enough moisture in there. Remember the amount of milk I put in? It tastes really good. It's a basic potato and hamburger casserole. Add whatever you like to it. Bake it at... Uh, 350 for an hour and a half to two hours. Hamburger and ca potato casserole a la Mary Gurks from the Ebenezer Reformed Church. Until next time, bye bye.